the RBC water concentration relative water concentration is more. So the water is going to start moving out of the RBC. So what is going to happen to our poor RBC? It is going to shrink. Yes, the RBC is going to shrink and collapse. So that is what is going to happen if we add the ocean water to our body that the water would come out of the ICF into the ECF or wherever that osmolarity is to try to maintain the osmolarity. Good. So now we have isotonic, hypotonic and hypertonic solution. So this is hypertonic solution and there we actually administer these solutions in the hospitals depending upon the situation the patient has come into. If you just want to increase the patient's extracellular fluid volume, for example, you are trying to maintain the blood pressure of a patient, give him isotonic solution. Isotonic solution would immediately sit in the extracellular fluid and increase the volume. Now we have to understand one concept, I think we know that, but I just want to make sure that we understand it. If you add fluid to the, to any of the compartments, and that fluid has the same osmolarity as the remaining fluid that is isotonic fluid, then it will not, the water will not move from one compartment to the other. So what does that mean? What that means is if I added 5 liters, if I added 5 liters of isotonic solution. Isotonic solution will mean what? The concentration, the solute concentration in here is the same as the remaining. So that would mean 280 milliosmol per liter concentration. No water concentration will change. If the water concentration did not change, do you think water will move in either direction? No. So net water movement is going to be 0. Why do I say the net water movement? This is a semi permeable membrane, water molecules have kinetic energy in them. So they are moving in and out of the cells all the time, but they would not just move to from one compartment to the other and sit there because of the osmolarity changes. They are going to move in and one, if one molecule moves into the ICF, another molecule is coming out of the ICF as well. So the net water movement is going to be 0. So this is very, very important. So let us say you got a patient who has come to you with hemorrhage, his blood pressure is going down. What are you trying, you are going to do, you are going to restore the volume. Well, it really depends nowadays we are much more sophisticated than just to restore the volume, but restoring the volume is a very important thing. So you give him isotonic saline, that would start bringing his blood pressure back to normal then you see what kind of a damage he has gotten, what kind of a deficiency he, is, he has and then you start restoring that deficiency. But just to bring the blood pressure back up so that the kidneys start, do not start going into the uh, uh, necrosis or ischemia and similarly the uh, other tissues and visceras are okay and perfused correctly, you provide the isotonic solution. Now if I give someone, same someone the 5 liter of hypotonic solution then what is going to happen? So let us see, I am going to clear up this diagram a little bit. Okay. So let us say, now be very careful, so x axis is our volume, so let us say this is 0 and from here to here is extracellular fluid volume and from here to here is intracellular fluid volume. So 70 kilogram normal, so this would be 28 liters from here to here, 28 liters and this will be 14 liters, good. This is y axis which is the osmolarity, osmolarity. So let us say normal osmolarity. I am going to say 300 milliosmoles. So that is 300 milliosmol osmolarity. So what I am constructing here is the Don and Yarrow diagram 
in which what we do is we'll put this here, we'll do this, and we'll have this over here. So this will become intracellular fluid. This is volume. X axis is volume. And from here to here is the volume of intracellular fluid. From here to here is the volume of extracellular fluid. And y axis is the osmolarity. Right? So, now we know that the normal osmolarity is going to be 280 or 300 milliosmoles. Question is, so I am not making the intravascular compartment for the time being. So, the question is, and this is a very common thing which would be asked of you, what will happen if we add isotonic solution or hypertonic solution or hypotonic solution? or what would happen due to any pathological condition or a physiological condition where we have either fluid loss or fluid gain and then how would that react. So, let us look at some of the uh, physiological situations where we alter the ECF and then we see what happens to the ICF. So, first situation what I want to do is I want to say that the person is vomiting. So, vomiting is normally isotonic, vomiting is normally isotonic. So, what would happen is that the patient or the person has vomited some fluids from inside the gut. What would that mean? That would mean again from the ECF some fluid has been removed. right. The fluid is isotonic. So, the fluid which got removed from the extracellular fluid, I will put that back actually just so that we can keep an eye. So, the fluid which is removed is isotonic. So, did anything happen to the concentration of the solutes? No, because what we lost is isotonic. So, solute concentration is still the same. So, the osmolarity here is still 280 milliosmoles or 300. We are using 300 in our example now. So, 300 milliosmoles. So, osmolarity did not change. The fluid volume changed. Will anything happen to the ECF, uh, sorry, ICF? No. Why not? Because the osmolarity is still the same. Osmolarity is the driver osmolarity change is the driver which will move the fluid from one compartment to the other compartment. So, no change in the concentration of the fluid here. So, no net movement. So, what would that mean? That would mean that ECF compartment of that person has shrunk, but ICF is intact. This is also the case with the diarrhea too, but diarrhea can be of multiple types. There could be osmotic diarrhea, there could be um, isotonic diarrhea as well. So, most of the time uh, diarrhea is supposed to be isotonic, but you could have a variation in that. Now, let us talk about one more situation. So, what I am going to do is I am going to put a diagram here. This was a normal 28, 14, 300 milliosmoles and what we got was in case of vomiting and diarrhea, we lost isotonic solution, osmolarity stayed the same. So, the end result was that if I make this dotted line over here, extracellular fluid compartment volume shrunk, intracellular fluid compartment did not change at all because there is no change in the concentration. Osmolarity stayed the same, 28, 300, 300. That is the situation with the uh, diarrhea and vomiting. Now, can we try to assess what happened to the water? Water was lost. So, is it a dehydration or overhydration? This is dehydration, right? So, can I say that this is iso, so listen carefully, iso osmotic, 